let's expand our knowledge of the item list a little bit. So the way the item list works is, uh, first of all, it contains all the objects within a scene. So all the objects that I'm working with are located here. So I get a nice list. And of course, um, right now, all my objects are on a separate layer. Now, what I could do, of course, is if I wanted to, I could uh, organize these objects a little bit different. For example, I could have every object be tied to the base. So I could actually drag, like left click and drag all these objects into this layer if I wanted to. I could, of course, left click and then shift left click whatever objects. I could move multiple objects in there if I want. And now, as you'll see, all my objects are actually put underneath the layer of the uh, base here. So I can reorganize my objects exactly as I want. If I want to move perhaps, uh, you know, the spring, this object here, uh, into the handle object. So let me just choose the spring and move it into the handle. Let me choose this, uh, I guess that's the handle too. Let me choose this one over here, move it into the handle. And now I have, you know, my hierarchy gets changed a little bit more. So I can move and reorganize my scene exactly as I want. Now, I don't necessarily only have to move uh, handles. I could easily move lights into there if I want, uh, or cameras. It really doesn't matter, but I can reorganize my scene exactly as I want. Now, on the left-hand side here, what you have is you have the visibility of every single one of these objects. And if you've noticed, um, if the objects have a hierarchy like this, if I choose the, if I basically make the top level object invisible, in this case, the base, if I make it invisible, then everything underneath becomes invisible as well. So that's always important to note. Now notice that when I turn off the handle, I only turn off the, uh, the handle and objects that are children of the actual handle, but I don't turn off everything below it because only these two objects belong to the handle. And of course, if no objects are linked or parented to one another, then I can turn them off individually. Now, there's another way that I could turn things on and off, and that is if I right click on items, I go to auto visibility, and now I just left click anywhere on any one of these objects in this list, you'll notice that I can activate the visibility of any one of these objects by just clicking on it. And it makes every other object invisible. Now the downside to this, of course, is if, if I want to work with multiple objects, if I make them visible by left clicking, and I make some of these objects visible, and then I end up working with, with this, and then I'm done, and I click on another object to work on, what you'll notice is that all my other objects become invisible once again. So it's useful in some contexts, but for the most part, I generally don't like to work like, work like that. Um, sometimes I can activate it by mistake uh, using hotkeys. Um, it happens. So just know that if you right click on items, go to viewport settings and turn off auto visibility, you can then make all the objects visible. And whenever you select that object, it will make that object active. So whatever is fully shaded is active, whatever is in wireframe is inactive. So whenever I click on these objects, you'll notice that I change my active object, but I still get to see my entire uh, object in wireframe. So I can at least line things up and I know exactly where this active object is relative to all the other objects. Now you can rename objects to whatever I want. Uh, so in this case, I selected the base. I can right click and choose rename. I can rename it to whatever, base, foot base, whatever you want to call it. Um, so you can rename any object uh, in the way that you want. Um, the other thing that I should note also is that uh, the way uh, that Moto 4 and Moto 5 work is slightly different in terms of adding items. 
if I wanted to add an item to this list, I have to click this button here and then go to, for example, mesh. And you'll notice that I just made a mesh item, but if you notice, it says mesh number four, but it's all grayed out. If I deselect that, and if I just look at that right now, you notice that it's gray and these objects are uh, colored in black. And of course, all that means is that this layer here, this item, does not have any geometry. It's just a container. It's just an empty item that has no geometry in it. Same thing with this one here. If I select it and I draw, I go all the way over to the cube here or any one of these primitives, if I add some geometry like this, if I just add this box and then I press Q to drop it, if I now deselect that object, you'll notice that now the mesh is actually written in black. And of course, the reason why is because it now has geometry. If I middle click uh, and just drag across here, uh, you know, my selection, if I just make the selection here and then I press delete, you'll now notice that the text has once again gone gray. So if I undo that, you'll notice that now it highlights. If I press delete, it goes back to gray. Um, the way this, of course, works in Moto 4 is that in Moto 4, you do not have this add item over here. The way it works in Moto 4 is that every single scene, uh, as you see here, you see this arrow, you see tire pump uh, 08.lxo. This is the scene that I opened. At the end, at the bottom of every single scene, you will have an add item down here. So if you click on it, you're, you're going to get a pop up and you can choose exactly what kind of item you want to add. In Moto 5, you have that add item over here. It's I don't really know why it was changed like that. I'm guessing it's because um, Luxology will be adding more different types of items and the list was going to get quite large or perhaps uh, because people were making new items by mistake. You know, it happens. Uh, the next thing I should go into is filtered items. If I click on, for example, mesh to turn it off, all my mesh items have disappeared. You still notice them in the viewport. All my meshes are still here because I haven't actually deleted anything. All I've done is I've hidden those items in the item list. So if I have, uh, for example, a rig or if I have, um, you know, other things I want to concentrate on uh, and I and all my mesh items are finished, if I don't have to worry about my items and my objects or, you know, whatever, if I don't have to worry about my geometry right now and all I have to worry about is setting up the camera, the lighting and things like that, then maybe I want to turn off my items in the item view or item list. I'm just going to click on filtered items again. I'm going to turn on meshes and now I'm going to turn off lights and now you'll notice that my direction all that is gone. What if I turn off my camera? Well, I can do the same. So I would generally do that if I want to only have my mesh items visible and I want to make everything else invisible. So this way I can focus on my uh, modeling and not have all the other stuff get in the way. So I'm going to turn back the item or lights and cameras. And now you'll notice that everything is back. So again, I'm not de deleting anything. I'm just hiding it from the item list so I can have a better way to focus on what it is that I need to work on. And I think that's all I really wanted to go into in terms of the item list. I mean, again, I can move things around. I can make things invisible, visible, whatever. Um, you know, these you don't really use that much for modeling, to be honest. Um, you know, you just really need to make sure that you're using the uh, visibility options. Uh, renaming is obviously important for, especially when you're going to be giving your scene over to another artist, or even if you're organizing and rendering and you know managing materials and uh, you know just navigating around the scene it's just going to be a lot easier for you if you name your objects accordingly um in terms of actually organizing objects uh and hierarchies and stuff like that you know go ahead if you want i generally have just one long list of objects i don't actually organize things uh you know like this mostly because i don't generally work on very very big objects i like to kind of uh put things uh, you know, just work on smaller pieces, save each other, uh, each object separately, and then put them back later into a scene. So that's it for items. Uh, yeah.